we specifically had some needs. We needed a narrow treadmill. We needed access to the child to engage them in play during therapy. We needed a safe environment for our adult trainers who ranged in height from four foot 11 to six foot three, who assist these children to step. We needed them to have good uh, body mechanics as they trained and repetitively provided this therapy. This project is an example of what happens when we have collaboration among our faculty, our staff, private industry, and philanthropists to make sure that the knowledge that's created inside our four walls doesn't stay there, but instead goes out and permeates the world to give hope. We want to give my son a chance, and that is all that parents in my situation want, is we want a chance. And that's what this gives, it's a chance, not just for my family, but for the broader reach that we're gonna give as a result of this. More children will have access to locomotor training. We saw the benefits, we were here in 2017 for Nolan, and just as an example, when we first came to Fraser, we were one year out of traditional therapy. He was a zero on the scale that measures how um, strong his core is. After three months, he was an eight. It's out of 20, so we almost went halfway up the scale. We're now at 12. So we progressed that far just through locomotor training and some of the additional therapies that they're giving here. And we've got a long way to go, but Nolan can sit at a table with his peers in kindergarten. Nolan can drive his chair with his arm. When we came home, they gave him a head array and said, figure out how to move yourself with your head. And we said, nah, we're gonna wait until he gets enough movement for his, in his arms. And over the summer, we put him in his chair and he's driving with his arms. So, you know, we've got a long way to go, but the only way that the narrative is gonna change around spinal cord injury recovery is if we give these kids a chance to prove it wrong.